Hello, everybody. God bless you, and welcome to the a new month of 2020. And let's just continue to grow strong with whatever it is life throws at us. This month's theme will be likened to last month's theme about politics and government, but we're going to be talking about finances. Um, this month's theme will be Money, Cash, Soul Series. And this is an introduction. I want you to understand how management of money often correlates with the way we manage our lives and spiritual walk. The purpose of the series is also for us to understand financial principles according to the scriptures and how these same principles affect our personal growth and development. And a quick word about principles. Principles and or natural laws affect you whether you know about them or not. So a lot of times we are affected by these things and are frustrated by things not turn out the way we want them to in our lives, with our health, with our relationships, with our money, with our relationship with God. And we sometimes get very upset at God himself. And the reality is, it is one's ignorance that causes folks not to be able to walk according to the principles that's already in place. A wise person once said that whether you know about the law of gravity or not, If you jump off a building, you're still going to fall. You're not going to fly just because you're ignorant to the laws. So the goal of this series is to harness the knowledge and the discipline required to save our finances, to improve our character, and to save our souls. Turn with me to Matthew 16, 26. Matthew 16, 26. And really, I like to start at verse 25. Verse 25 says, For what whosoever desires to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. For what profit is it to a man if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? The title of today's lesson is Money, Cash, Souls, Part 1. What profit? What profit? Jesus right here brought up several phrases that you hear a lot when it comes to finances. One, save. We talk about savings and what saved a lot in the word of finances. But I want you to focus on the word Profit. See, he compared savings to profit. And you'll see this a whole lot in various parts of the scriptures. So you know what it is to save, to put something to the side for future use. And the Lord is saying to those who want to save their life, who want to keep what they already have going on in place, who wants to maintain the status quo, he said, so whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Now, uh, understand it, and I wasn't going to bring this up, but I'll bring this up anyway. There are people in society right now whose best financial advice is to save your money. There are churches that are not growing because they rather save their money. There are people who are not able to retire because they just want to save their money. But there's this thing called inflation. And all I'm going to just tell you this. Look it up if you want to. This is not part of the lesson. I'm not talking about savings today. But I'm giving you this as a freebie. When you save your money underneath your pillow, when you save your money in the bank, there is little to no interest growing. Which means as prices increase due to inflation, You end up losing the value. Come on. You end up losing the value of your money. Jesus saying, if you would desire to save your life, it will lose its value. You will lose it altogether. A hundred dollars inside your pillow over a hundred years will not have the purchasing power that a hundred dollars do today. And then he said this, think in terms of profit for what profit is it to a man if he gain the whole world and loses his soul? Think 
in terms of profit. And some might say, well, what, what do we mean by profit? Again, it's another financial term that will affect you whether you're ignorant to the principle or not. So let's talk about what a profit is. Profit, if you're looking at it as a noun, is financial gain. Particularly the difference between the amount earned and the amount spent in buying, operating, or producing something. So check this out. This isn't like regular work. This isn't hours for dollars. This is saying I have to operate something and it cost me up front. And then I earn on top of that. So let's say I spend a million dollars to work a business because a year from now, it's going to generate me a billion dollars. The the profit is a billion minus a million, okay, which means I made money, all right? And also buying. Some of us like to buy shoes. Well, I'll use another example. Um, during the corona, and we in a corona pandemic right now at this recording, people were buying hand sanitizers, and then charging more. So they would spend like a dollar for like a little thing, get hand sanitizer and sell it for $5 to make a $4 profit, a $4 gain, or in producing something. Sometimes people will create something. Let's say somebody makes clothes and it was only $7 worth of material, but then they sell that clothing for $25. See, the profit is the gain. It is the gain. It is the amount of money you earn. It is the difference between the amount of money you earn to the amount you actually spent in buying, operating, or producing something. See, another one, if you look at it as a verb, profit is to obtain a financial advantage or benefit, especially, especially from an investment. When you save, there is no profit. When you invest, there is a profit. The Lord said this. Ask yourself this question when it comes to your soul. What profit is it if you gain the whole world and lose your soul? Is there something that you can gain in losing your soul, even if you had the whole entire world? And for those who do not understand profit, he said, well, what can you give in exchange for your soul? See, it's like, can you, first question was, is there any advantage to losing your soul, even if you gain the whole world? And then for those who don't understand profit, he said, can you even break even when you exchange your soul? See, we know the answer is no, but for once again, the be- we know how to exchange. That's why he had to break it down. But the first thing the Lord said is, Think in terms of profit. What is the benefit of this trade? What is the advantage I'm going to get from this investment? If you're going to put your life down for something, what advantage is it to you? Thinking in terms of profit requires strategy, long-term thinking, Sacrifice, and by sacrifice, I really mean delayed gratification, investing over spending, knowledge of value, and work ethic. And I'll briefly touch on this and we'll talk about the rest on Tuesday. It requires strategy because if you take some of your savings or if you put your, 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 your soul on the line for something without a strategy and you fail, you lose it all. People lose their retirement all the time because they have poor strategy and trying to gain profits. So you don't need that much strategy when you go to work. You sign a contract, you salary, you pay by the hour, you get paid because you're there. Whether you do the job or not, and whether you keep the job is another story. It requires long-term thinking. See, some people are so happy because they they have, let's say, $1,000, $10,000 in savings, but they, it's not growing. It's not moving. And they think, well, it's too risky. It's too risky for me to invest it. And, and we might do a lesson on a parable of the talents, but God don't like that type of thought. Oh, it's too risky. So you have the instant gratification of having the savings now. Some of us blow our savings for the instant gratification of buying stuff. All right. It, re- it requires sacrifice and long term thinking so you can get the gain on the back end. See, it involves investing. See, when you invest, the money works for you and you get interest savings. You get little to no interest. God is saying, I want you to be interested in 
gain. I want you to be interested in interest when it comes especially to your salvation. But you're not going to understand salvation if you don't understand how to savage your finances. But we keep going. All right. Knowledge of value. What something is really worth. Versus how much something cost. And that's another point altogether. Again, the $7 material. Somebody say, well, I spent $7 to create this shirt. I'm going to sell it for $7. What profit did you get? None. What, what, about the, what about your work ethic? How much did you get paid for your time making that shirt? How much value does it add to the marketplace? Can you sell it for $25? You might be able to sell it for $100. It depends on your knowledge of value. And of course, it takes a lot of work ethic. You can't be lazy and generate profits consistently. So then, thinking in terms of profit is needed to avoid losing your soul. That's according to the Lord. We're going to do a quick case study, then we're going to close. The case study of Jacob and Esau. Esau was um, the oldest son of Isaac. Isaac was the son of promise that, that was given to Abraham that was going to eventually give us Jesus Christ. And in these cultures, the birthright belongs to the firstborn. That is, it proves that you're the firstborn and you get the lion's share of the inheritance. And Abraham was rich. So think about you, the firstborn child of Bill Gates, and you're going to get the most of his empire. But this is even greater. This is greater. God's saying that you're going to produce a line of kings that will rule forever. Matter of fact, what they did not know exactly but they had faith in it's like you're going to produce the christ all nations through you are going to be blessed not just one nation all nations are going to be blessed this is what the firstborn had as his legacy given by god but it by law has to go to the firstborn but what we find out is jacob his twin brother who was born who came out the womb a little bit later ended up stealing his birthright and this is how it goes genesis 25 29 through 34 is it once when Jacob was cooking stew, Esau came in from the field and he was exhausted. And Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stew for I am exhausted. Therefore, his name was Edom. Jacob said, sell me your birthright now. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is this birthright to me? Jacob said, swear to me now. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went away. Thus Esau despised his birthright. We already explained what a birthright is. You already know what a bowl of lentil soup is. Esau was a hunter. Jacob was a homebody. Esau was his father's favorite. Jacob was mom's favorite. But that's not really important. Just understand there's some tension in the household. And we're not talking about family matters. We're talking about thinking in terms of profit. Esau was tired from a long day of hunting. He was hungry. How many of you will sell your inheritance? And some of us don't even really know much about inheritance. How many of you would, would trade in um uh, $500,000, let's say your mother was or your father, or your grandparents was going to give you all the houses and all the money that they have accumulated over the years. How many of y'all would trade that in for a Happy Meal because you were hungry? See, he wasn't thinking in terms of profit. He wasn't thinking, what profit me if I trade in my birthright for this soup? Or what shall I? But he was thinking, what shall I give in exchange for the soup? And then since he was into instant gratification because he did not think long term because he wasn't that strategic but Jacob was strategic because he was into he because he don't recognize value and the value was definitely there because the scripture says Esau despises birthright see financially speaking you despise something when you undervalue it you despise your marital partner when you don't recognize that person's value, when you don't appreciate it. You despise God when you don't appreciate him. And appreciate is another financial term. To appreciate is to understand and recognize the true value of something. See, Esau did not appreciate his birthright. Therefore, he despised his birthright and saw his birthright as less valuable than a bowl of soup and his temporary hunger. And I tell you today, Jacob became Israel. And we're still talking about how Israel blesses the world today through Jesus Christ, his descendant. And right now, Esau is dead. 
it could care less about a bowl of soup. It has become a laughing stock in a very sad and tragic way. In a very sad and tragic way. But Jacob, he was taking profit. I can take my talents, create some soup. I understand my brother and I can profit major. I can get an eternal inheritance for this bowl of soup. They come a dime a dozen. But before we laugh too much at Jacob, we do the same thing all the time. We trade in our souls for soup all the time. We give up very valuable things that we could have had for soup all the time. Don't you know why Esau ultimately gave up his birthright for some soup? Because of how he felt. He felt hungry. He said, what good is this birthright now? What good is it now that I feel this way now? And you can keep reading when Esau realized how he got screwed. Then he wanted to kill his brother. Nah, don't kill your brother. You sold it. Don't wait till after you lose it and then try to blame the system. Don't try to blame the laws. Don't blame God. Don't blame the principle. Know the principle and use it to your profit. We trade in success for sleep. We trade in employment for the snooze button. We trade in our future retirement for today's vacations. We trade in our savings for debt. We trade in wealth for entertainment. We trade family legacy for divorces. We trade work for government assistance. We trade truth for feelings and lies. We trade time for money. We trade opportunity for comfort. We trade truth for lies again. And we trade commitment for baggage. We trade health for laziness. And ultimately, many trade in heaven for hell. Because we're thinking about now, now I'm bored. Now I'm unhappy. Now I'm frustrated. Now, instead of thinking, what profit is it? And then if you don't understand the value of something, even that question will be answered wrong. And that's why we have in a series asking what does it profit? Is needed to make choices leading to eternal life. Otherwise, we'll find ourselves busy trying to save our current life, which leads, according to the Lord, to an inevitable loss. So then, in this introduction, moving forward, think, what will you gain over the long term with the decisions being made. Understand that profits are better than wages. And that profit is better than fair exchanges. People think, oh, I get paid $12 an hour, but somebody else get paid $200 an hour. And guess what? That person's hour is 60 minutes and your hour is 60 minutes. It seems like there's some strategy and some value in that 60 minutes missing between that person and you. And yet another person is making a thousand an hour. What does it profit? Are you thinking in terms of profit? You can't begin to strategize and add value to yourself until you understand profit. God understood profit. He gave. In John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Why would you give your son? Well, you think about exchanges. That whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's why. Whosoever. He gave his only begotten son. First of all, he knew He's going to get a return on his investment. He didn't just throw his son away. His son was an investment. 
First of all, he got not only his son back because he was risen from the dead third day, but he got other sons, as Paul said in Galatians chapter three, verses 26 through 27. He said, for you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. What profit is it for you to remain away from the Lord? What profit is it to you to be an enemy of the Lord? Think about it. You deposit your body into some body of water and then you are then added, deposited, saved in this spiritual account called the Lord's church. That is the body of Christ. Acts chapter 2, 46, 47. The Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved. This is after they said, well, what must he do? Acts 2, 38. Repent and be baptized, every one of you, for the forgiveness of your sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Think about the prophet. Not about your so-called temporary loss in the initial investment. Again, this is an introduction. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, you know, Leave a message, like and subscribe and share this channel. And we look forward and I look forward to all of us learning how to live a profitable existence in harmony with God and each other. Take care.